<laughs> Welcome to Watch It Play Table Talk Christmas Edition. <laughs> Okay, that, that didn't sound like Santa Claus. That sounded like some old Canadian guy with a Scottish accent. I apologize for that, and I apologize for uh, trotting out Christmas things so early. It's December 3rd at the time of this recording. And to be honest, I know the stores have been bringing up the Christmas stuff much sooner, but the reason why I'm doing it is because this will probably be the last Table Talk episode of 2013. And so what I have here is a little stocking full of stocking stuffer topics. Topics that probably don't deserve a full episode, but put all together should be light and fun and, and will fill up our time together here. So uh, let's get into it. So our first topic is about picking first players. Now most games come with some way to designate the first player. And to be honest, I'm starting to feel like these desires are getting a little too clever for their own good. I want something simple and fast. I don't really want to have to figure out who traveled to a city last. Well, let's see, I, I live in a city, does that count? Well, I traveled to one two weeks ago. You did too? Okay, uh, well, I think I went on a Monday. When did you go? It, <laughs> I don't want the game to be fiddly before I've even started. So a lot of the times, if the game doesn't have some method, I'll just roll a die. Uh, or if it has a silly method, I'll still roll a die. But recently, I've switched things up. My friend John Glant was using this little player picking product. It's called Spin Fort. And I picked one up when I was at the Boardroom Games Cafe, but you can Google for it as well. I'll, I'll put a link in the description. Anyway, this is a little perfectly balanced metal hand with a pointing finger. You put it on the table and you spin it. And then wherever it stops, that's the person who goes first. You do have to be careful about how hard you spin it because this thing is really well balanced and it will go for a while. <laughs> so when I was complaining about fiddly ways of picking people, when I do this, I tend to just give it a lighter spin, but I find it kind of fun and clever, so I like to bring it out. All right, what's our next thing here? Cocked dice. Okay, we have a rule in the Smith household. If a die isn't lying perfectly flat on the table, then it doesn't count. Uh, I would like to just sort of trust people to be able to say, okay, well, this one's mostly on one side, so therefore this is a six. But then what if it's like this, you know, what if it's again something a little thicker? And to be honest, I don't even want to have to think about that. So <laughs> I say it's got to be on the table and it's got to be flat or we re-roll. To make, to make this work better, I usually use my little dice box here that you guys have seen before. It's a little picture frame that's been modified. And what I find amusing is the people who most often don't want to use this when they play with me are usually the ones who roll their dice like this. For whatever reason, they just can't keep them on the table. So what are, you, what are you gonna do? People have their own styles for rolling dice. Okay, what else do we have in here? Mm. Ah, your favorite colored piece. Now this isn't important to everyone, but I must say, if I have the option, I'm always going to pick blue. First of all, since I do it so consistently, when I'm looking at any game, <laughs> I don't forget which piece I am, because <laughs> I'm usually blue. But sometimes you end up in a game group with somebody else who also likes the color that you do. What do you do then? Well, what I try to do is um, <laughs> be courteous. <laughs> sometimes I'll let the other person do it. Sometimes I'll try to grab it first. Um, but do you have a preferred color for your, for your playing piece? That's the question you need to think about. I'm gonna be asking you about all of these things, but uh, to keep that one in mind. All right, there is one more topic in here. Oh yes, what game do you want for Christmas? So, I was trying to think about this. What do I want for Christmas, if I could get any game? And I came up with two. I'm cheating. I came up with two, uh, two answers. One of them is Quantum, and one of them is Nations. Uh, so, Quantum is being released here in North America by Passport Game Studios, and Nations is being released here in North America by Asmodee. I don't think Nations is out yet. I think it's supposed to be out before the end of the year, but I'm not sure, and same with Quantum. Quantum is one that I read the rule book for uh, a while ago and I thought it looked really neat and the buzz coming out of uh, BGG Con has been very positive for it. So this is one I definitely want to grab and, and get on the show. So you can, you can keep an eye out for that. Nations is one I'm interested in because it's, uh, it's I think a civilization building type game and I've been hearing some, some good things about it as well. And I think it's a little more streamlined than some of the other 
civ building games. So I'm very curious about that one. But what about you? If uh, you could get Santa Claus or a loving spouse to, to give you any game, uh, what would it be? And I'd like you to go through all these. I'd love to hear, you know, what do you do to pick first player? Have you found a clever method when you don't have a, a more obvious choice provided by the game? How do you treat dice that aren't laying perfectly flat on the table? Do you accept them? Do you just trust the judgment of the group? And do you have a favorite colored piece? Go ahead and throw those in uh, the YouTube comments below. Create a little video response if you'd like to. We'll put them in the next episode. I'm not exactly sure when the next episode will be. I'm hoping it will still be a week from today, but we'll see. If it gets delayed slightly, it's just because of the other videos we're shooting and because of the Christmas season. But if I don't get a chance to wish you this later, have a Merry Christmas. Have a wonderful holidays, however you celebrate them. And I just appreciate so much you guys being a part of this show and this series and continuing to interact with us. And I look forward to another year in 2014 of making more videos and having more table talks with you. But until then, thanks for watching.